All right. How is everyone? I have to be loud, right? Because we have a strong competition. Samurai, I think it's playing, you know, uh, Snow White. Uh, so, I have to be more entertaining and louder, right? So, a brief uh, intro about myself. I've been at the Samsung for God, 11 years, right? Since we set up the fun. And uh, I'm surprised myself that I'm still here because we're doing fun stuff. Honestly, uh, we always, you know, have these great opportunities like today, meeting with these, you know, great builders. It's super, you know, entertaining and also encouraging and also stimulating for you name it, right? Depends on the stage of the company, the readiness of the, of the team, sometimes entertaining, sometimes truly, you know, stimulating, okay? But never boring. Okay, that's the fun part of the job. Okay. Um, before that, I was a builder myself. So that's why I understand what's going on on your side. Okay. As, if you want to understand industrial robot, industrial manufacturing, I spent 12 years in Siemens. Okay. Uh, my last job there, I was in Germany, the CTO for their global you know, industrial networking business. But then at the Samsung side, I start, you know, dealing with consumer electronics, the consumer side of the business. Okay. As uh, my colleague Miller said, right, we are doing, you know, crazy amount of investments. The goal is to, you know, open up or discover new business opportunities for Samsung. Okay. How big is Samsung? I also asked the same question when they approached me when I was in Germany. I said, is Samsung bigger than Siemens? And the guy talked to me and said, hey, four times bigger. I said, what? All right? So, and that's why I was saying that startups should pay attention to what Samsung wants to do. Okay? And I heard many people say, you know, my friend Paul was saying, they're telling me, oh, yeah, it's really are famous for, you know, if you build it, customer will come. I would say Samsung with a motor is similar. If you make it, customer will come. And we can make many of them. Uh, because one thing Samsung is very good at is mass manufacturing at a very fast pace. When we, when we discover something sticks, okay, and we are not afraid to experiment at a massive scale. Okay? One example is the first, you know, in the first year when we enter smartwatch market. We release how many hardware? We release, we, we release four products. Many of them fail, of course. But today, I'm still doing that. Okay? So that's the thing, that's why we say Samsung is probably pretty good partner for robotics companies. Because we are more willing to take risks to try things. We are less, we need to say our, our you know, drawback, right? And we are maybe less disciplined as Apple in terms of, okay, reduce the number of SKUs, spend more time to you know, get the product perfect. So that's the something that for you guys to think about. Okay. But there's no romance, right? Robotics is really, really hard. The, the, often the question I ask everyone here is, some of you have met already in the morning, okay? Why is this time different? Okay. We have been investing in robotics uh, for the past, I would say, six, seven years. In the past, mostly, I would say, opportunistic, right? Now, we invest in uh, intuition robotics, right? We, out of Israel. We invest in autonomy out of MIT, which was then exited, uh, acquired by, you know, now, uh, by Delphi, right? Now it's part of uh, basically the motion, the joint venture between Panda, right? And we invest in covariant robotics out of Berkeley. They do, you know, robotic time, because they, they invented the imitation learning. Right? We invest in IC, they do autonomous truck, the idea was more beautiful, elegant than that. The idea was, okay, I'm doing neuroscience, general purpose, artificial general intelligence. But at the end, went after, you know, autonomous truck in a 
very constrained environment of cargo yard. But we've been through all of those journeys, early days of robotics. It's really tough. Okay? You often ended up into a vertical. All right? That's why you can talk to me, I can share with you my, my previous in those seamless life, so how tough vertical market is. It's usually not a product business. If you don't know what's the difference between product business, solution business, or service, you can check on it. Okay? It's not pretty. But then why? But the surprise is I can tell you is we decided at the beginning of this year to open a new investment area called robotics. Why so? That's why I want to share with you. Maybe you can get stimulated, right? right? I don't know. I don't have the all the definite answers. I can just give you some early signals, right? Um, the multiple signals we we got. One is always the market, right? Always the market. What's going on with this, this market? There's mega trends. There's aging population. Okay. I'm getting older. I'm having problems, you know, how to take care of my parents. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. And then you cannot hire the, the full-time caretaker. Anymore. And you don't want to send your parents to, uh, you know, elderly care facility, right? So what's, what's the solution? There's, there's not really, not many solutions. Except, okay, maybe a robot could help eventually. So that's one mega trend. There's going to be demand for that. Then you will read, okay, COVID, or you post COVID, you can blame the government, dish out too much money, so people don't want to return back to work. Mostly the people don't want to return to, uh, to work are the blue collar people. They, they get too much hang up, at least in the US. Or you, you read, okay, many other, even poor countries. People don't want to do, do low-income work anymore. They don't want to become a waiter or waitress. They don't want to do the boring, you know, manufacturing job. Or they don't want to do the boring or just the job. So there's a sh major shortage of labor. Okay? That's a mega trend. That was, the reality is very simple because the economy grow, people get more, you know, comfort, uh, more income. They don't want to do the, the old style job. And the government all you know moving towards against immigration. So you don't have cheap labor coming in. And add on top of that, there's you know decoupling you want to unsure of your manufacturing. So all those things come on together. This that's also the other mega trends. There's demand. Okay? But is the solution there? What's different now, right? What we read is that it's really the wave of generative AI. Okay? In the past, you know, I think it's more than half a year now. Why so? Because in the past, you know, programming a robot is very painful. Okay? You have to do past planning. And then you have to go to an elaborate, you know, motion control of that. You add on top of that all the, you know, safety, you know, guard, uh, mechanisms, right? And at the end, the, the body is a special purpose body. Anyway, you have to do this again and again. That's not a, that's why I say it's not a really a product business. It's not a solution business. Okay. But now, hopefully, this generative AI, what we have seen some, you know, early signs of it. The multimodal foundation models. Okay, what what what, the, what do I mean by multimodal? Means you are not just take a single modality like a text input or like an image or video. You are combining them. Okay, the most famous one is uh, probably Palmi from Google. They combine language model with video model together. Now, what's the big deal? How about this? 
you don't have a just normal conversation with the system. Just use your natural language. And the system will generate the video, step by step. That video is not for you. That video is for the robot. The robot just watch the video internally, apply imitation learning, to figure out how, what to do. So then, what happened afterwards? It's so easy to communicate. First, to program a robot, but you don't need the traditional robotics control engineer anymore. And then, more importantly, as a consumer or end user, it's, it's much easier to interact with this robot. Okay? This is what is like a human robotics interface or interaction. So this will change the game. Yeah, they will disrupt the job market. Some of the old jobs will be gone. But it's opened up the market so big. Okay. And how big is the market? It's, you could say it's the size of the blue color job market. Or you may say it's also the part of the size of the white color job market. That's how big the market is. So don't need to calculate, okay, what is the biggest robotic, traditional robotics market? No, you don't need to do that. Okay. That's why Samsung gets more excited in the market. If Samsung don't enter a small market. Right? We are we're pretty big. Right? If the market is, let's say, below a, a few billion dollars, okay, don't even bother. It's a running error. That's why we get excited. But of course, we don't know the timing. No one knows the timing. Okay? You have to try it. That's why I want to be very close to you guys. I'm not a maker anymore. I don't build anything anymore. I just keep on talking. <laughs> Someone has to make things. And fail fast and just make again. That's why we are here. I want to see more of you in the future here. All right, the, the opportunity, opportunity seems to be here. Okay, I say seems to be here. Okay, the, the market is way bigger than the traditional robotics market. Okay, what we are talking about giant market. If all the you know the the things work as no we envision, but we just don't know where, what pieces you know come together. Okay, but it's up to you guys to figure it out. I hope now you probably understand why Samsung now start paying attention to robotics. Okay. And at last I'd like to thank the event organizers, right? The community here, the Amit, right? <laughs> yeah, and all the partners here that like, for having this vibrant community uh, and grow it to even bigger size. It's still, you know, well, there's no romance here. It's still very tough. If you look backward, it's ugly. You only see dead bodies. But look forward. Any questions? <coughs> yes, please. You're saying we're going to be able to communicate naturally with the machines? What will we do? What will happen to engineering content? Or we'll see another way of um, Today we need it because the tool chain is not ready. Eventually, prompting will be hidden. Right? You will have a conversation, you get a voice conversation, and then the voice speech to the text. Then you polish the text, become a prompt, then feed that. So there will be an abstraction. Yeah, you will be hidden somewhere in the middle. Okay. Just like and you said, you don't see source code. You don't need to see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if we talk about you know uh, uh, the input, right? The uh, human uh, computer or human robotic interface, right? So language is always there. This is the, the most natural way for human or even program to, to you know, communicate these questions. So that's why ChatGPT or in general the language model will be always one of the modality, most important modality. The other reason is that it's also technical. Because language is already standardized. Okay, there's no ambiguity. Written language. Right? So that's why it's a good way for you to, you know, <laughs> capture the intent. At the end, you want to figure out the intent. What is, what, what do you want? Okay? What, what is, what's the meaning of this job? Yeah, so that's why language is important. Um, when looking at, at Samsung, you are when when looking at Samsung, you are more of a um, in, like you care about industrial robotics or just uh, um, more of consumer robotics. Um, I would say we do care about consumer robotics for sure because that's our current consumer electronics market, right? Um, I don't have a clear answer yet. How? much we should care about industrial robotics. I don't know yet. Okay? But the one thing I know is that you have to find a business customer likely first because they are more willing to pay for a higher price. Um, the, the tricky part is you need to find a customer who don't care about low performance. Okay? Usually, so you, you basically need to find out some um, low end customer. So that's the, the dilemma. The, why is consumer robotics very hard? Is here are the, the the customers that are not technical, and the environment is much tougher in terms of you know the uncontrolled, uh, non-generalized, non-standard environment. Okay, those kind of things are very tough for uh, robotics. So that's where my intuition is. You're probably gonna get a one of the you know, business market. Doesn't have to be industrial. Could it be logistics? Could it be something else? Okay. Get one of the business uh, vertical first before you you, you, you get into. Okay. Hi, uh, I think we are still far away from uh, AI gaining conscience and uh, controlling the robots. But how about humans? And do you think that uh, our operational technology, cybersecurity, is ready for this? Um, human in the loop, or you can say tidy operation, is, is very naturally, I would say, the, uh, a step you know, in between, for sure. Okay? I do believe in that. Okay, that's number one. Um, in terms of Cybersecurity is a totally different, you know, uh, dimension of, of the uh, consideration. It relates to security and uh, safety. Okay. Um, it's a very important angle, right? Uh, so that, that's sort of is similar to you know IoT. Okay. I used to do industrial network, network at Siemens, right? All the critical infrastructure and the cybersecurity, right? So it's the same, same thing. Once you, the, the dynamic is always, do you want to open it up or not? Okay, you want the maximum you know, security, you disconnect the system from anywhere. Okay, but then you suffer from, you know, or you cannot adopt all the, you know, the modern technologies. Okay. So that's the, I think that argument, probably people already see the signs, and also the, the basic outcome, you have to, you cannot afford to become a silo, then become obsolete. Yeah, because of the, the, the thing is, is your competitor may be care less about security, but they are more willing to adopt you know, new you know, technologies. They're going to win competition. Okay, so to, most of the customers don't know about security. Okay, that's, the, that's the dilemma. I mean, the, 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 the competition will force you to open up. Then the solution, the ideal solution is how 
how do you develop the right security solution without impeding the, the adoption of technology itself? That's not true. Usually customers don't, are not willing to pay. More secure doesn't mean they care more about the functionality. That's always the problem. Okay? Security is not a primary function. Thank you. I'm going to steal the microphone for a second. Anybody here developing a robot that pours water? I need to, someone to replace me. I want to introduce Lizzie and our investors panel. Sorry, Raymond, we're just running